Well, good morning, friends, and welcome back to my channel. We've got a busy week ahead of us. We did all the meal prep we needed to do yesterday, with the exception of a few items. And today we're going to start out with our loaded breakfast burritos. Sausage, egg, cheese, onions, and peppers. That's what I put in them. Okay, friends. We got a burner turned on here. We're going to saute our eggs. Excuse me. We're going to saute our onions and our peppers that we get. The peppers and the onions. I just want that to get a little warm before I put that stuff in there. I'm going to get out the eggs. We can crack some of these eggs while this is frying up. And get everything going real good here. Okay, now we got the onions and peppers in here sauteing up. I just seasoned them with salt and pepper and I didn't realize my camera was off. But that's all in there and that's going good. Okay, I'm gonna put just about a cup of milk in there to start. And I want salt and pepper in the eggs as well. And we'll just keep whipping these up. Okay, so those could use probably just a little bit more. All right. Well, I don't know, maybe a cup and a quarter of milk. Okay, those are all ready. I'm going to leave that in there. Set those aside. i got to wipe my mess here. I've got egg whites. Okay, put this away. Now, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to put potatoes in here. So I need to get a nice bunch of these potatoes. And this is all I do. I got to let my water get good and hot over there. I just dump some of these in here. We're going to use quite a few of these. Yeah, that should be good, right there. I'll seal this up. I keep as much air out of this bag as I can. Now, I just take, that's good and hot, and I just cover these. They're not swimming in water, they're just covered. Right there. That's it. Just barely covered. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside. Right along by the eggs. Those have to sit for about 10 minutes or so. And then they'll be ready for cooking. These are doing good in here. And I don't have my great big daddy pan out. So what I'll do is as I get these cooked up, I'll just put it in my big bowl. And then I'll be able to mix them up. But I'm going to need my big daddy bowl to mix all this up. Yeah, definitely. I'm afraid it wouldn't work too well on the other one. All right. We're going to let that cook. Turn that up just a little bit. I'll put these eggs away because I do believe we have enough of them. And then we're going to get our cheese out. And I use the sharp cheddar. I love sharp cheddar. All right, these are doing good. All right, I'm gonna go get my, trade this little bowl in for my big bowl and I'll be back. 
Okay, I got my big bowl. I got the big daddy bowl. It might be way too big for the project I'm doing here, but I love a great big bowl because it allows you to be able to mix everything so nice. That's what we do. I'm going to let this moisture cook out of these. So I'm not going to cover them up. These are going to be wonderful. I want to see if I've got a little bit of garlic. And I do. I'm going to put this last... Oh my goodness, I'm going to put this last little bit of garlic I got here in these. It's not a whole lot. It's just a little bit, but I'm going to use it. Come on out of there. There we go. There. that mixed in there. I'll have a little hint of garlic in there too. That'll be wonderful. Alright, so these need to cook down before I can do anything else. Okay, you can see this is nearly all cooked down. And the liquid's almost completely gone from it. So I'm going to just give it a little bit more. Okay, we're going to put this meat in there because that's cooked down quite a bit. And we can just break this meat up. Turn this down a little. We don't want this burning. We'll make it work. Okay, this is broke up pretty good. I just want to get it heated through. And then the onions and peppers will be cooked all the way through very nicely. Okay, so that's good. All right, let's here we go. Dump this all in here. And it's just going to hang out in there for a little bit. Okay, now. Okay, friends, now we can dump these potatoes in here because they're all rehydrated and they're wonderful. And we're also going to give them a little seasoning with a little salt and pepper. Not a, oh, not a ton, but they do need to be seasoned too. Okay. And if you find your sausage is a little too salty for you, when you make your potatoes, don't salt them because they will literally absorb the salt in there and it will it will eat, uh, make your dish beautiful. It will re it, it'll take away that salty. That's what you do if you make a like soup and you've got it too salty or something or even like spaghetti sauce, anything that you make that's a little too salty for you, just take and cut up a potato, cut it in, you know, bigger chunks and throw it in there and let it simmer in there for a little bit. And it will absorb the salt in that dish and usually it corrects it. 
Okay, so we're going to let these go for a little bit. I got a little olive oil in my pan. These are fully cooked. I just want them um, a little bit brown. Okay, you can see these are getting brown, and I'm scraping all the loveliness off the bottom of this pan. I've got just a little bit of crispness in there. I love doing these because you can do it all in one pan. Alright, I'm going to say those are heated all the way through. Alright, so we've got the potatoes going in. I didn't want to put too much oil in because I didn't want them to, to be too greasy. So we'll just scrape it right off there. And that'll be wonderful. Oh, this is, my pan really is heavy. Okay. That's looking good. That'll be good to mix up. Now all we got to do is get the eggs done. And this will be gorgeous. We're going to have a whole load of these. Okay, we got that going. We're going to whip up our eggs here. And we're going to pour our eggs right in there. All in one pan. We won't dirty a bunch of dishes. That's what I like. Now, we're just going to let those go. I am not going to season those because everything else is seasoned so well. And there's still bits and of, of potatoes and, you know, the peppers. And you can see pepper floating in here. So we're just going to... Do this number. I just go carefully and scrape the bottom. I am going to put a little bit of butter in there because you want nice creamy eggs, you need a little bit of butter. And that'll melt right down in there. These will be wonderful. We'll let those cook up a little bit, and then I'll come and I'll scrape them, and I'll be back when they're done. Okay, friends, see the eggs? They're nice and soft. You don't want them too done because they are going to be reheated, too. So you want to account for that. So you, want, you don't want your eggs raw, but you don't want them for... Uh, uh, scrambled real hard either. They're perfect right there. Okay, there goes the eggs. Oh, that's hot. Put that right in my sink. Okay. Can you see that beautifulness in there? Oof. We get the, everything mixed up, broke up real good, so that's all mixed nice and even all the way through. These are going to make an absolute wonderful burrito, breakfast burrito, filling and wholesome, nice healthy one. Okay. Perfect. All right, now I've got, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to put my pan over here for these. We're going to fill these. We've got 16 of these. And I got more in the pantry, so I don't know how many we're going to get. 
but we're just going to go until it's all done. So, let me break some of that up just a little better than what it is. That dozen eggs was just perfect for this. Okay, you want to put a little bit in here. I don't want to forget my cheese. cheese in a bowl. Because I can repackage it when it's done. That don't matter. Okay, then we're going to just take a nice bunch of cheese, put some cheese on there. When I roll these, I go just like this and just twirl. And there's your burrito. That's how easy it is to do. So we'll do two of them. And we'll get these rolled up real nice. Cheese. To have that beautiful cheese on there and it's sharp cheddar so it'll give it a beautiful flavor and i didn't have these in the fridge my um tortilla sh uh, shells so they're easier to roll if they're in your fridge just heat them in your microwave for a little bit or even, you know, put them in your oven for just a few minutes. And it'll work real nice for you. Okay. All right there, I'm gonna get these done. And when I have these done, I'll bring you back and I'll show you how wonderful they turn out. And look, somebody's getting that one for breakfast. Do you want a burrito for breakfast? There you go, I split it. You can have it. Okay, friends, we got 28 beautiful loaded breakfast burritos. I got them all packaged in, um, I wrapped them in foil because a lot of times they just go in the oven to be heat reheated. But I wrapped them in foil and I packaged them in five and six. Um, Tootsie Bell ate one. She loves them. She said they're wonderful. So these are going to work good. Um, these are for my daughter, my son, and our freezer. So let me get my stuff cleaned up. Now that we got all these done, these are gorgeous. And I will be back in a couple hours and we'll be doing the hash brown casserole. Well, hello friends. It is the next day. We did the uh, 28 of those beautiful loaded breakfast burritos yesterday. And I had every intentions of getting to the hash brown casserole and getting that video complete in one day, but life happens. So here we are, 
day two on this video. Today we are going to do the hash brown casserole and I'm also going to give you a little bit of a bonus. Um, it calls for cream of chicken soup. Yes, I've got cream of chicken soup on hand. However, I'm going to show you how easy it is to whip up some homemade and we're going to use that in our casserole. So let's get to the stove and let's get busy. Okay, friends, so this is really, really easy. Um, it's like a roux. We're going to start with, and I'm going to put the recipe in the description box as well. I'm doubling this because I'm doing um, several pans of hash browns for a freezer meal. So I'm going to, it calls for six cup, or excuse me, six tablespoons of butter. I'm doubling it, so I'm going to use a stick and a half. Okay, and then I'm going to use a half of this stick. That half. I'm going to get this on and get this melted. You always, always use, because this is a roux that we're putting together. So you always... And I'm sorry my head's cut off, but you got to see this. <laughs> Um, you always use equal parts of butter and flour, and I'm going to bring you right in close. We're just going to work on, we're going to turn this down just a hair, but we're going to work on letting this get melted before we put in our flour. And it's a lot of butter, but I'm doing a big recipe, so. Okay, now we're going to sprinkle in our flour. Equal parts. Now, we want this to cook a little bit so that we can cook that flour out of there, but we don't need it that high. Stir it around really good. Now, while that's bubbling up a little bit, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open our chicken broth. We're going to do two cups of chicken broth. but I want this to cook up a little bit. You can smell that flour cooking out of that. It starts to get kind of like a nutty smell. Okay, we're gonna put in our chicken broth. And we're gonna get that mixed up. Now while that's there, we're going to also add two cups of whole milk. And we're going to add this right to it and it gets thick. And I'm not going to put any salt in this because my butter is salted. If you use unsalted butter, you're going to want to put a half a teaspoon um, for the recipe. I would need a whole teaspoon because I'm doubling it. Okay, But I am going to do one teaspoon of granulated garlic because this is a double batch. And I'm going to do just a little bit of pepper. That's optional. You can get that mixed up. And that, friends, is all that this requires to be a substitute or homemade cream of chicken soup. Now, you could add chicken to it, but I'm not gonna do that. This is just a substitute for cans. This is equivalent to like four cans without any water, four condensed cans. See how nice and thick and beautiful that is? 
and it'll get thicker as it starts to boil again. Just keep stirring it constantly. And we'll use this in our hash brown casserole. This saves you tons of money, friends. You could put a little onion powder in here, a little parsley. If you're going to make this to eat, you could put diced chicken in here, chicken bits and parsley, and make it into a regular soup and have it with crackers or whatever, but we're just using it for a substitute. See how beautiful and thick that's getting? That's what you want. It's gorgeous. See that? Nice. And people have asked me, they thought that was a spoon. That's a whisk. I love that little whisk. That was my mother's. For those of you who've been asking me, that was my mother's whisk. All right, I'm going to turn the heat off. This is bubbling. It's not going to get any thicker. It's beautiful. And that's all it takes. That's it. Now, I'm not going to pour this into a jar. I'm going to leave this right in the pan, and I'm going to cover it because we're going to make our hash brown casserole. Okay? Gorgeous. See that? Beautiful. Okay, friends, we are going to start with our onions. We're going to saute some onions for our hash brown casserole. And then I've got the sausage that we had for that. So when the onions get nice and cooked in there, I'll go ahead and put this in there and just heat it up so it's easy to mix with all of it. So there's all my onions. Looking beautiful. Okay, we'll start getting our onions in here. We're doing quite a bit. We're also going to do a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper on these. And we'll just let them cook up a little bit before we put the sausage in here. And then we got our potatoes. Now I'm using dehydrated potatoes. You could use the frozen if you want. Just thaw them out. But uh, I'm using the dehydrated ones. And uh, so I've got a big bowl. You see right here. These are all potatoes and they've been rehydrated. And these rehydrate beautifully. And if anybody's wondering, no, I don't dehydrate my own potatoes. I'll show you what I use. I get the Idaho Spuds. I love them. So this comes in like a, oh, 50 serving. It comes in a big carton. You get these, I get these at Sam's Club for like $7.88 a piece. These are great. And I always keep lots of them in my pantry. In fact, I just ordered more the other day. So I've got them, my root cellars stocked. I always keep, you know, three, four on hand. All right, so these are going to cook a little bit. Okay, and while that's cooking, I'm thinking I might have to get, well, we might make this work. Or I might have to get my Big Daddy bowl out. We'll try this one first. Those are wonderful. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to probably need two of these pint, um, pint sized sour creams because I'm doubling the batch. Okay. Those are sauteing nice. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And we're going to put our we're 
we're going to put our sausage in here, our sausage crumbles. Now, we're just going to turn this down just a little bit. I think I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more because you know cast iron won't uh, stick very well. Put a lid on that and let that, let that cook for a little bit and warm up. This, remember, is, let me turn the camera around here. This is our cream of chicken soup, if you remember. We just made this nice and thick. That's all going in. Beautiful. I got my husband, Mr. Wayna. He's up at the store grabbing me cheese. I ran out of cheese. I usually never run out of cheese because I keep it in my freezer and I always got cheese, but I literally ran out. So he ran. He did a store run for me for it. Perfect. Now I'm going to mix this up, start mixing this up because I think it's going to need a little more. Whoa. You know what? I might have to get up my bigger bowl. I'm not good with these small ones. It doesn't need any more soup. It might need some more of the sour cream. And it does. You usually use one sour cream per batch. I'm doing two batches, so. Calls for two pints. And you know what that stuff is. This is what I call poor man's Tupperware. Ha! I save those and use them all the time. That's what you do when you give something out because you know you're never going to get your good bowls back. I don't like having my head cut off there. You know, when you're never going to get your good bowls back, those are the ones you send out. This is looking pretty good. Then we'll just have to put our onion mix in here. This is beautiful, friends. I believe it's going to mix up in this bowl pretty darn good. See that? It's looking nice. I gotta mix a big old bunch of cheese in here. I want to check on this. Put that in the sink. Oh. Well, hello, friends. Oh, I got flowers. Oh, you're just beautiful. Thank oh, you. Look, I got you these flowers and I love you so very much. <laughs> Thank you. Mwah. Oh, those are beautiful. And all my cheese. Oh, look at friends. Look at my beautiful flowers he got me. I'm going to set those over there. We'll finish this up. And then I can put my flowers together. Oh, thank you. Oh. This is doing good. This isn't going to be loaded. I buy my wife one of these every time we go to the store. <laughs> it's chocolate. And it just melts in your mouth. It's so good. A little piece of chocolate. I want to get the rest of this broke up. So, we, this is real life in our kitchen, friends. Mr. Wayne is home now. He's not driving for the company no more. They are all caught up. And he's just going to hang out with us. Ah, you put that in the fridge. But I want to save the bag. 
Thank you. The fridge or the freezer? The fridge. Oh, I thought you wanted one. Oh, no. Well, there's a fridge out there, but this fridge in here. All right, we're going to put this cheese in here. All those flowers are gorgeous. Usually, uh, it calls for about two cups a batch, so I got a good four cups going in here. Let me put this lid on here. Oh, this is beautiful. This is so nice, friends. This, this hash brown casserole is wonderful. And with my daughter, now you can do, you can add eggs to yours. You can do it. And in my newest cookbook, I've got both of these recipes in there. The um, one hash brown sausage casserole and the new recipe with the eggs. Although I don't do that for my daughter because she doesn't do well with eggs. So... I think that's a plenty of cheese in there. But I'm going to put a little more pepper in there because this is going to my daughter. And their family loves pepper just like us. Also, I don't want to forget, I need to melt a pound of butter. Or, excuse me, two sticks of butter. Two... Yeah, I believe it's two sticks of butter. I need to check my recipe because I'm not sure if it's two sticks or two sticks per because I'm doubling this, remember. I'll check my recipe. Yes, it calls for one cup of melted butter per batch. So we'll get that melting. So we're going to need a whole pound. This is good enough. We can shut that off. That's beautiful in there. We'll just turn that off and let that cool just a little bit. We're going to get our butter melting. I'm using margarine this day. Only because I'm out of butter. I gotta get to the store. Actually, I don't buy butter at the store anymore. I buy it for my Amish ladies because it's so much cheaper. So we're using this. I also got vegan butter, the plant-based butter. And really, I tried it the other day and it's not bad. I used it. I don't remember what I used it on, but I did use it. I got it when I went to Pine View. I thought, well, I'll give it a try and see how it does. This is like a ton of butter. You don't eat this when you're on a diet, that's for sure. This is for feeding hungry kids who can eat like this. If I eat like this, you'd have to haul me around in a truck. Okay. We're going to put that right there. We're going to get that on to melt. Before, and then the last thing we'll add in is the onions and the sausage. These are beautiful. Okay, we're going to let that melt. Okay, let's see. Okay, friends, Mr. Wayne went to grab my Big Daddy bowl. <laughs> I'm going to have a mess out of this if I try to mix it in this bowl. And I don't like the big messes. Then I can get all this in there. We can get this mixed. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. I got to scrape this out of here. You want to hold this? This is a heavy booger. Thank you. Okay. I love this big bowl. Oh, did I get your finger? There you go. Okay. Now we're going to dump in our butter. 
seems like an awful lot of butter. But oh, just set it right in the sink there. That's good. I need to get a little hot pad for my pan. Oof. Get that all in there. Oh my goodness, there we go. Okay. All these pans are heavy. Alright, I'm going to need to use probably this one. Be my best bet. That's on. It's doing good. I'm still going to use that one, but not right at this second. Look at this, friends. Look at how nice that mixes up in this bowl. This stuff is good, but it's like hard to tack on a plate. All the stuff in here. I told him you definitely don't need it on a diet. And no, there's no way to make it low carb. <laughs> Not with the potatoes. Okay, that's looking good. Okay. That's beautiful. I gotta make sure I didn't forget anything. I'll be right back. Let's see. I got the hash browns, the butter, we did the cream of chicken soup, the onion, the sausage, the cheese, pepper. I got all that in there, salt and pepper, so we're good. What we're going to do is load up our pans, and this will be wonderful. And I'm going to use this right here, because this makes it easy. We're going to divide it between these two pans. And these are these are deeper, bigger than your, you know, your standard 9 by 13 inch pans. These are the like the lasagna pans. But because my daughter's got a big family, we're doing it this way. And that's beautiful. Okay. I'm going to put the rest of it right in here. We're going to scrape this. Okay. This is beautiful, friends. What a lovely way to fill your freezer. And this is so good when you got lots of kids to feed, a big family. And you can quadruple this and make lots of pans of this. So that looks good. All in there. All beautiful. Just pat it down just a little bit. All right. Here we go. This is a big bowl going in the sink. Big daddy bowl. All right. So now we're going to take these because these are done. And we're going to top them with cheese. good cup and a half handful and a half you know how a cup of cheese is about a handful just spread it around on there we get it in the corner over here you can if I can reach this you got two choices at this point Okay, you can, well, you gotta cover it no matter what, but you can cover it and you can bake it at 350 degrees for, oh, I'd say about an hour at least, 50 minutes, 50 minutes to an hour, or you can cover it, let it cool if, if it's not cool, you know, your sausage and stuff. And you can cover it and wrap it, label it, and put it in your freezer and bake it later. And that's what we're going to do. Because my daughter is going to use this later. So, that's what we're going to do. Sounds like a winner, huh? Now, 
also wrap it with plastic wrap around it. All right. Now, I'm just going to label this. And brown. And sausage. Casserole. Um, bake. And yeah, 350 degrees. I just put on hers one hour or until heated through. Because everything in it's already cooked. I need one of those big boxes. I should order one. Oh, I wonder if, I think Sam's has them. So, I think Sam's does have them. Okay, we're gonna lift this up like this. Get it beautiful. This is the hardest part of it, is wrapping it nicely. Okay, we got it. Look at that, and I didn't destroy it. Threw my box across the kitchen. But that's all right. Okay. So now that's done. We did the 28 um, burritos. We did that yesterday. But it's all going to be in this video. You're all going to see this as one video. Anyway, so that's all done. My daughter and my son already came and picked up their burritos. Because I don't have a whole lot of room in my freezer. She picked up the burritos and she picked up... What was it that I made? I'm not sure I remember. I've made so much, I tend to forget. But I got three beautiful pa Oh, the beefy macaroni and cheese. She picked that up. She picked up her, her um, uh, burritos. And now she's going to pick up this tonight. So, there you have it, friends. We got this done. It's a beautiful breakfast casserole. You can even have it at nighttime. You'll have plenty of leftovers for lunches, whatever. But look at my disastrous kitchen. I need to get this kitchen done. And put my beautiful flowers. Oh my goodness, my husband always buys me beautiful flowers. Aren't those gorgeous? All them beautiful colors. I got to show these to you again. They're just gorgeous. And he picks them all out himself. We know the gentleman at the... He's good friends with the uh, guy at the flo our florist. Okay, so I'm going to get that done, get my kitchen cleaned up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for hanging out with us. It's been real, friends. This is how my kitchen is, real life. You all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.